Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. You know, one thing that we should always keep focused on with all this stuff that's going on, and you know what stuff I mean, is that there's definitely something more that's happening kind of behind the scenes. That a lot of what's happening is diversion and distraction. Uh, this is this is part of the globalist playbook. And we, we have to, of course, be aware of what's going on and stay on top of it, but not get so caught up in it that we forget that there's uh, other things at play behind the scenes. And I believe that that's what's going on um, a lot in Ukraine and Russia right now, that this is all part of their, their globalist plan. Um, doesn't mean that there's not really, you know, actions going on there that there's not really people getting killed and 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 homes getting burned and lives being destroyed absolutely but the reality is is that the these globalists they view the people of ukraine no different than they view the people anywhere else in the world we're just all cannon fodder uh for their big globalist takeover and so i think that um that is a big thing that what we're seeing uh play out there and i want to talk about that uh, but also talk about more importantly um, some of the stuff that that could eventually affect all of us, not just in Ukraine, not just Russia, but everyone because of what's playing out there and how we can get ourselves prepared for that. Um, just some updates uh, on, on what's going on. Apparently, according to the news, um, Ukraine is, is, is holding uh, some decent ground considering the odds. Uh, and they've been able to push back uh, the Russian military and retake some areas. And they're, they're at least putting up a pretty good fight. This morning, uh, NATO met and the NATO general secretary spoke and basically told uh, the world that they do support Ukraine. They do plan on helping Ukraine uh, with everything other than, well, troops on the ground and the... Um, the sanctions that they're trying to do uh, no different than the united states and and other governments everybody's wanting to sanction russia and it seems to be pretty apparent that that's not as effective as what they want it to be um, and i don't want to get into all the politics because i get it that there's a lot of people in russia that that are against this war also um, and there's there's every indication that 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 putin is a madman and that putin is is, is waging his own uh conquest quest war and I've you know I mentioned this yesterday in a video and boy is it still true you know I've made been making these videos for consistently for over three years and this subject in the last few days seems to have caused the most um, just emails from people and, and it's funny because some of them are saying that I'm taking Putin's side and some of them are saying that I'm taking the the west side and I can't see the other and the reality is is I'm trying to see both sides and see that both sides have made some valid points and that both sides are doing a lot of wrong uh, but in the end both sides are all part of the globalist playbook they're all part of it they're all part of the globalist plan uh, every major player in all of this, they're all part of the World Economic Forum. You know, Putin, Zelensky, Biden, all the heads of state in, in uh, NATO, they're all part of the World Economic Forum. And I believe that that's what we're seeing play out um, is uh, a, another big distraction, uh, much like we've seen for the last two years globally with the health crisis. Uh, they have to switch gears like what we've talked about on this channel for the last few months that that we're, we're coming up on that time period where they're going to switch gears. We're, we're coming into a new phase of, of the global chaos and the global panic and the global fear that will usher in um, this this great reset and this changing of, of everything that we know and war. Well, what better way to do it than, than through a war? And so I think that that's what's being played out here. I think every player in this in this game is playing their part, and that's really all it is. It's just a big game, and you, and I, and the people of Ukraine, and the people in Russia, and the people all over. We're just we're just cannon fodder, 
in their big game. And so uh, I I as much as some of you may take one side and others take the other side, and that's all fine, uh, please remember that in the end, this is all a big globalist game. And, and, and that's really what's being played out here. Um, I think that's why we're seeing uh, folks like Biden and, and really the rest of the West trying to talk tough, sound like that they're really going to come in there and, and they're going to save the day and they're going to hold Putin back and they're going to put all these sanctions on him. This is the kind of talk that's been going on for weeks now. And yet they're really not doing a whole lot. They're not doing a whole lot because they want this con to continue. Um, they, they, I, I don't think, I know a lot of people say, oh, it's because they're stupid. It's because they don't know what they're doing. I'm not so convinced of that. I think they do know what they're doing. I think that they're playing their part in this big game called Great Reset and, and Global Takeover. And I, I think that we should remember that because in the end, the ones that are truly affected by all of this are you and I and the rest of the people on this planet as we watch the, 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 the shareholders or the stakeholders, as they call them, and the, the, the wealthy elites move in and take over our planet, take over and, and consolidate us down into to one governance rule, you know, under, under their little global umbrella. Now, I know that sounds pretty extreme to a lot of you, but I think that there's certainly some evidence to that. Uh, and if you watch carefully, I think you'll start to see that um, it, it's not playing out quite like uh, they want us to think. And if you have to look, between, read between the lines and, and really scrutinize what they're doing. I think that's why, you know, Putin, everyone said, well, this is crazy what he's doing. He, he, he's acting like a madman. He's acting like some crazy madman. And then on the other hand, well, well, Biden, what, what, he, he's looking so weak and so stupid and, and the whole West, the things that they're doing, like they, they, they can't uh, stand up to him. Well, it's because that's how the game is supposed to be played right now. Um, you know, it, I think it's been no surprise that, that Biden um, and, and his entire regime uh, have have, have kind of played into China and buddied up with them and 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 really given over a lot of 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 our sovereignty in a lot of ways uh, to China instead of instead of building America to make America strong and independent and self sufficient um, we've purposely cut ourselves off uh, from our own resources so that we have to use others and that's another part of the plan um, I think a lot what's going on right now. In Ukraine, um, I think they want to control uh, resources and they want to limit those resources. And what it will end up doing is causing uh, shortages, uh, which is something that we've seen happen already for the last two years. That's what a lot of this has been, is to disrupt supply lines, to disrupt production, um, to disrupt the resources on this planet so that they can come in and say, this is why we need all this uh, new technology, this fourth industrial revolution. This is why we need um, all of these uh, controls over because of our environment. You know, we're not able to produce enough. You know, we've, we've got to control uh, people, populations. We've got to control the food production uh, because obviously there's not enough to, 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 to feed everyone. Look, there's shortages everywhere. So we have to come in with our solutions. So they have to create these problems. They have to create uh, these crises. Um, you know, I've mentioned on this channel uh, the last few days, Russia is the number one exporter of wheat and uh, Ukraine is the number five or so, depending on what year you look at, uh, exporter of wheat. Did you know that Ukraine is also uh, the fifth largest producer of corn on the planet? So that's, that's some pretty uh, major amounts of food that's being produced right there in that region. Another YouTube channel called Adapt 2030, most of you all know who that is. One of the best YouTube channels out there when it comes to putting out information like this. Uh, released a video this morning you should go watch and he talks a lot more in depth of the actual numbers and the resources and stuff that are being put out in that region and how it, it how what we're seeing is a control uh, a move to to grab up and control all of these resources um russia you know they put out about 60 some percent of, of fertilizer for the world and they've cut that off and so 
uh, right now, a lot of countries are either going into their planting season or will soon be in the next three to four weeks. And so they're cut off from fertilizer. And then Ukraine, who is, like I just said, the fifth largest producer of corn and wheat, um, in three to four weeks, uh, are they going to be able to go out there and start planting their fields? Um, this could be going on until then. And even if it's not, um, the amount of, of damage that it's done to the country, if this lasts days or even a couple of weeks longer, um, the amount of damage that's done to the country, I, I doubt very likely a lot of their farmers will be able to go out there and start producing and start planting in like a normal season. Uh, they're gonna be focused on on rebuilding and, and getting things uh, back to a normal setting. Uh, so, so, you know, is it easy to say or is it likely to say that Ukraine is probably not gonna be producing very much uh, uh, wheat and corn this year, and they're a major, major producer on the global stage of both of those commodities. And and then also, like I said, um, fertilizer, uh, fertilizer shortages. We're seeing fertilizers uh, anywhere between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars a ton, which is just astronomical uh, in, in the farming world. And we're already hearing. I've seen a lot of reports of farmers saying that they they just they they either can't get the fertilizer or they can't afford it. So they're just going to try to plant their crops without any and see what happens. Uh, so folks. This could be the year, and I've been saying this for a while, this could be the year that people get um, get shocked and, and get a dose of reality of how important it is to be producing your own food. Is this the year that we're gonna see massive famines and massive shortages? It may not be, but I think we're, we're entering that year that we're gonna start seeing this more often. Uh, folks need to be stocking up I need to be getting your gardens out. I mean, I know some of you are thinking, well, I've, I, it's too cold right now. Certainly it is. We've got an inch of ice and, and sleet on the ground here. But as soon as you can, uh, you need to be getting out there and, and expanding your own food production this year, pushing it to the max because um, with all that's that's happened, all that we know that has happened so far, and the things that are likely on the on the forefront, you know, there's predictions that this year's droughts here in the United States out west will be worse than they were last year, and last year was pretty awful. And so, if that all holds true, because of this 400-year solar cycle that we're in, um, it's it, it's all adding up to be a pretty bad uh, scenario when it comes to food supplies. And, you know, it, could it even be within the realm of possibility that all that's happening in Ukraine and the Russian invasion and, and how this, the, the obvious overt weakness from the West to, to be too afraid to engage in Russia uh, and engage Putin, is all this just a big game? Is all this just, uh, you know, some little game that's playing out for their globalist ambitions? Uh, it's quite possible, especially like I said, when you look at all the players, they're all part of the same team in the end. Um, and so we, we have to realize that and not get so caught up. And certainly we remember and we pray for the for the people involved. There's a, there's a lot of tragedies happening right now. Um, and and we, we certainly do that. We need to be aware of the possibility of cyber attacks. Um, I think that's a very strong possibility of the next, next phase of this. Um, uh, even <laughs> Hillary Clinton was on MSNBC this morning actually calling for uh, private hackers and the US government to engage in cyber attacks against Russia. Uh, NATO has already said, they said today that if a cyber, if Russia uh, does a cyber attack against a NATO country, that they would consider that an Article 5 violation. And so uh, it, it would be very possible that this uh, incursion onto Ukraine could expand to either global cyber, cyber warfare or even more than that, an actual real war, a global war between all of these nations. So I don't think that what's gone on over there is over. Uh, the, the fighting seems to still be intense and, and, it, and there's looks like Russia is trying to sack the, the capital city and, and there's all kinds of reports of various different things coming on going on out over there. But let's still remember that I think this is all part of their globalist plan. Uh, we, we notice how we so immediately transitioned 
from the health crisis being bad and in, as soon as it went away, now we're involved in this global conflict that's all over the news. It doesn't make sense out of nowhere. You know, Russia's so concerned about having a NATO country on their border when there's already three NATO countries on their border. Uh, it's just out of nowhere. The stuff that Putin is doing just seems erratic. The stuff that NATO and the West is doing just seems overtly weak. Uh, I think it's because it's all part of a game that's being played. And you and I are going to be the losers in this if we're not prepared. So that's why we have to stock up. That's why I promote things like preparewithtravis.com. Uh, it's, a, it's a great alternative and addition to your preps. Um, it's, you know, the long-term freeze-dried food. But not just that. You need to be getting out. I, if I were you, I would be taking this weekend and figuring out what you can do to, to beef up and bulk up on your preps. Uh, because uh, I think in the coming weeks, especially the fact that planting season for uh, a big part of the global bread basket is coming up pretty soon. Uh, if you if you look at the charts, most of the places where where uh, you know your wheat and your corn is produced, the planting season starts in about three weeks. And is all this going to be over in three weeks so they can plant over there? In three weeks, are we going to just miraculously have enough fertilizer for planting? Most likely not. And so uh, come this fall, we could certainly see massive shortages of very critical and key uh, foods uh, that, that's needed to feed the world. And so we need to be serious about, about stocking up now while you still can while the prices are still, even though they're higher, but they're still within the realm of possibility of stocking up, and then also getting out there and getting gardens, getting yourself as close to being food independent as possible uh, for these, these coming times that we're gonna face. Because I just, I could be wrong. Um, I, you know, that it's a, it's a strong possibility that I'm completely off on this. But folks, I don't think that I'm too far off. Uh, and I think that, that we could be seeing some, some pretty tough times ahead because of all this. All right, folks, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.